I would request uh, 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 Rotarian Kuldeep Joshi to introduce our uh, speaker, Major General Niraj Bali, uh, who is a very good friend of mine and he, he was very much happy uh, to take part in our ma my maiden uh, meeting of RCPN. Uh, uh, Kuldeep, would you take it forward? Good evening, everybody. I'm very happy to introduce today's speaker, Major General Neeraj Bali. General Bali served Indian Army for 41 years with distinction. During his career, he has participated in anti-terrorist operations in JNK and Assam and was awarded Sena Medal for Gallantry and has twice received Chief of Army's commendation for his services. He has held, he has held important instructional appointments in prestigious army training institutions. Post-retirement, General Bali has been active in civil life. He has delivered talks at IIM Ahmedabad, XLRI, and has addressed senior corporate managers and professionals. He is credited, he is a certified life and leadership coach. Title of his today's talk is Culture Matters, Lessons for Organizations from Indian Army. Culture is like a post-it pads, a glue that holds all the pieces in organization together. Some of us have very simplistic view as to how army builds culture. Catch them young and keep them busy. I'm sure there is far more to it, a painful, deliberate process which is now institutionalized. We are indeed fortunate that for the first meeting of a new Rotary year, we have a very accomplished speaker who I'm sure will make his speech very relevant to service organizations like Rotary and in such disruptive time as these. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Major General Neeraj Bali. Sir, the airtime is yours. Thank you, sir. And uh, first of all, congratulations to my dear friend Ram Gopal, uh, who seems to just keep adding new feathers to his cap all the time. <clears throat> but uh, also, on a, not such a happy note, I must tell him that uh, when he told me this evening that he's invited a galaxy of very senior people, diplomats, lots of army officers, I must tell him that he made me a very nervous man. Uh, I have uh, tried scanning at the names of the people who are present. I really can't take everybody's name because I really can't see everyone. But I must tell you that in the order of people who are making me most nervous are uh, Brigadier Dimpi Khanna, uh, who was my uh, best ever boss in my entire career. By the way, the 41 years that you spoke about included four years in NDA and IMA. So Brigadier Dimpi Khanna is here. That makes me very nervous. Uh, Air Marshal Gokhale is here. He's been my instructor. And uh, among the other friends, I can see Bobby Matthew, a very dear friend, and Deepak Dhanda. I'm sure there are many more people. If General Praveen Bakshi is here, then I'm really extremely nervous. That's the culture of the army. All right. <clears throat> let, me start, let me start with a bizarre question. Some would say even a nonsensical question. <clears throat> How would you respond in your job or your profession or the place of work if while doing your duties, you were shot in the head and survived. And let me add a caveat. How would you respond if at the end of this, you got neither a bonus, nor an appraisal, nor a recognition, nor an official recognition? What would be the state of your motivation uh, going forward? Now, clearly the question is a idiotic one, but not so much. When you listen to the next true story from the army, in fact, from my regiment, the story is about a guy called Jubin Matthew. Now, Jubin comes from Trivandrum, is a Keralite. He has had zero background of armed forces in his entire lineage in the family. And he decided when he was 17 and he joined the National Defense Academy. Later, he got commissioned into the Bihar Regiment, the regiment which has been in the news for very good reasons because of Galwan, uh, incidentally also the regiment where I have served all my life. And 
when he was 26 in the year of 1997 he was posted in jammu and kashmir in the area of gandharbal manasbal now 1997 was the year when militancy was pretty much full blown i know it because i was also commanding a battalion at that time in kupwara a little further away so uh, jubin's battalion got a tip off of the presence of a couple of militants three militants including two pakistanis in a village near sora they went they surrounded the village they stayed up all night and probably in freezing cold and as is the, the correct norm they started searching in the morning and as they began the search jubin was behind a small hut where the kashmiris keep their uh, shali or husk and somebody had to poke his head out to check out where the militants might be because nothing could be seen and jubin decided that rather than giving this task to a jawan he would take the risk himself so he poked his head out and promptly got shot in the head between the two eyes on the forehead he was wearing a bulletproof patka now these bulletproof jackets and patkas of course save your life many times but it's not as if you don't get injured it's not as if you're bereft of trauma so he was shot he fell back the patka of course splintered the shrapnel got into his skull and there was a little bit of bleeding he was given a first aid but since he was the senior most guy present on the spot he took the call not to be evacuated and they went on doing this operation till late in the afternoon till all the three militants were killed and after that jubin was evacuated to the hospital in a vehicle which he drove but once he got to the hospital the doctors told him that he had not been very wise because any further delay would have been probably uh, much more serious he was operated upon they took out the shrapnel but some of these things remained lodged in his skull now he was in the hospital for a few weeks and then they gave him eight weeks of sick leave uh, during which he was expected to go back to trivandrum lie down in a bed read a nice book and recover Jubin refused against the regulations he rejoined the unit when I later had a chance to talk to him and I asked him two questions I said why didn't you get evacuated he said sir I thought the injury was minor I was only worried about the fact that my eyes were one eye was bloating up and was getting uh, black but by and large it was all right and I said why didn't you go home so did somebody call you he said no of course not but you know sir there are shortage of officers in the unit no one's going to tell me to come back but i thought you know they will need another working hand now this story would be glorious enough if i stopped here he is not paravir chakra he is another guy in the army but the story doesn't end here four months later they got a tip off of couple of militants in a village near uh, Manusbal. They went there. They surrounded the place. They couldn't make out where the terrorists were. There was a small hut again in the courtyard of a house. One young lieutenant, Ravi Kamboj, decided to get into that hut. The hut had two partitions. On one side were the animals. The other side there was husk. So Ravi got into the husk and because he couldn't see anything, he decided to break the wall, the partition between the animals and the husk. Unfortunately for him, the terrorists were sitting where the animals were tied. So the moment there was a hole, they fired a burst. Ravi Kamboj died on the spot and one more Jawan died on the spot. Jubin heard the firing from outside and decided to crawl into the hut to try and save them. He didn't know that they were died already. And as he went inside, he got, a, he got hit by two bullets, one in his shoulder with a serious injury. And the other, no prizes for guessing, in the head, on the bulletproof patka, at the exact same spot. He again fell back, lost his hearing, part of the hearing, for which he later told me that he is very grateful because he can now listen to his wife selectively. And then he was he was dragged out by others, including the CEO, Brigadier Rati, 
and his life was saved and he was sent off to the hospital where he was repaired again given sick leave and i think the story will get boring but i will tell you he refused the sick leave again and rejoined the unit for these two operations jubin got no awards this is not a commentary on the indian army the fact is not everybody get awards all right there are people who get and the people who don't get for a variety of reasons but jubin just continued to stay in the unit and kept functioning i am also reminded of the fact that when he was in the hospital the second time i sent him a short note which he keeps uh, with him where i said good josh jubin but don't lose your head now the, the question is of course i must tell you it's a it's a, a happy ending uh, six months later he took part in one more operation this time didn't get injured and got a sena medal now jubin is not a paramvir chakra guy he is retiring as a colonel he is sitting somewhere in trivandrum today and otherwise he is posted in chennai the question is how is it that some organizations and please understand that i am not sitting here as a marketing job for the indian army i am only stating what i know how is it that some organizations collectively tend to behave in manner which defies the trend which is swirling all around them how is it that they look like tiny islands of their own selves i came to face to face with this question in iim ahmedabad i had gone to deliver a talk and a, a smart lady got up and said how is it that when the intake from the indian armed forces army navy air force is from the exact same sources as rest of the country same demographic same villages two tier three tier towns same financial status same education same middle class mores what happens to the guys in the armed forces that in 3 or 4 months you are transformed you are willing to die on the slopes of kargil now we had a little banter there and i asked her tell me what the answers could be i'll tell you what the answers are not the answer is not patriotism this is one of the words i never heard when i was in the army it's one only hears it when you step outside it's not training either of course training plays a part a very major part but nobody can train anyone to simply keep getting hit in the head and still keep working in a motivated manner so what is the answer the answer is organizational culture this is that big powerful elephant in the room that we are sometimes not even aware though what mr kuldeep said was absolutely on the money it is not something that just crops up on its own it's done painfully it takes time to develop but it is something which i have had two tenures as ceos of two successful companies and i i have been aghast at listening to people who say hamari company ka culture theek nahi hai they know it but there is zero effort to fix it because i think people maybe don't know how it has to be fixed now 2003 i have was fortunate to be deputed to do a study program in hawaii there were two wonderful things hawaii is a lovely place and even though my wife is also on the call right now i will say it the second happy thing was i went alone now now during that i picked up one of the electives i chose to study was identity politics it was taught by a wonderful very wise man called dr robert bursing who is to hop now with mr bajpai and jal musharraf and so on so every morning when this old man would walk into the class he would shout at top of his voice culture matters and every day i thought this is drama he is being dramatic to get grab our attention but you know what he was right culture matters and that's why the title of the talk today is that now what is this animal called culture this is the very silent force which ripples just below the surface you can see it sometimes but you also can't see it culture is how we collectively behave it is not what we say is not what we splash on the wall every company you go to says we are customer centric for us employee is god but if that was the case everybody would do well isn't it so it isn't what you say you are it's not what you espouse it is what you really really do you can say it in small things you can see it in the way people reply to your emails you can see it in the way the receptionist speaks to you you can see it in the way when you call a government office and you get a reply saying mujhe nahi pata aap char din ke baad aana 
फिर मैं फाइल ढूंढूंगा राइट इट टेल्स यू इन बिग थिंग्स लाइक हाउ ऑनेस्ट एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज और हाउ अर्जेंटली इट टैकल्स इट्स इट्स जॉब्स सो कल्चर इज अलॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बट हु हैज द कल्चर एवरी सिंगल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज अ कल्चर whether you like it or not whether you gave it a thought or not your organization will have a culture a company will have a culture uh, rotary club pune north will have a culture it might even be distinct from rotary club downtown pune or any other rotary club i don't know but every organization every family has a culture well just look at the differences how is some families behaved in a disciplined manner and some families don't look at even the difference of hygiene look at difference of how families behave under crisis how they respect each other this culture can be the result of a thoughtful effort as i think has been the case with the indian armed forces we inherited it from the british we tweaked it to our requirement and we we stuck to it as if our lives depend on it because you know what our lives depend on it now or you may not give it any thought it is still going to grow like wild weed in your unattended lawn but you will have a culture culture is what actually works all right if people believe that what works in my company is to be a cutthroat that's the culture if someone believes that in my company if i'm dishonest i'll be thrown out that will become the culture so culture is what works for individuals if gossip is the norm gossip will be a culture so don't get surprised you say my company has a very wonky culture well somebody has not fixed it so culture can be a very very powerful ally you know as in the armed forces this is the armed forces i mean i can give you a zillion examples but you know in even in the recent past people like wing commander abhinandan vartaman who go suffer privations don't speak a word or people like captain mahendra nath mulla of the indian navy go down with their ship or why go far Mr Kuldeep's brother General Pankaj Joshi who lost his legs in a mine incident back in Sikkim in 1967 but decided to just keep working and fighting on his own merit that's culture on the flip side when pakistanis occupied the kargil heights they had presumed that the indian army was unlikely to attack them uphill during broad daylight bereft of any cover and therefore they will they will have the status quo they didn't read the indian army's culture right and we know the answer now the point is all this sounds very inspiring and very good but what do we do about it what do we do about it in our own lives i'm going to return to that in a moment but let me first give you a couple of examples from the corporate sector let's talk about indigo the usp indigo has carved for itself is we are on time when you get to the airport don't you see how silently but firmly you are nudged towards the aircraft when you are carrying an indigo ticket somebody is standing outside the line is telling you indigo please come this side please move forward bus is ready somebody is cleaning the aircraft quickly and almost invariably they'll announce that they are taking off before time how is it that a simple thing like this a trick like this has not been mastered by other airlines you know what training is part of it briefing is part of it but culture is a big issue here please remember that back in 2010 the leading aircraft in the country was almost jet airways 26% of all share next was king fisher 23% share and in 2019 indigo had reached 49.9% they don't even have a competition the national airlines is falling at 39.9% and spicejet is still further behind now i'm not deriding any airline but i'm just telling you that there is a trick here so i went to uh, i must confess i'm writing a book on culture uh, commissioned by pan mcmillan so i i've been interviewing a lot of people and i went to indigo's academy in gurgaon i fly and i was struck by the fact how in every little thing they do they are worried about time is not just in the aircraft it is just part of the whole system when you enter you see a wall where every employee's name is there it's a glass wall anybody who's come in time draws a green smiling emoticon anybody who's come late draws a red sad looking emoticon for full public display and by far most of the emoticons were green 
they have an organized system where all pilots attend an operational control center where every bit of the on time business is discussed time is discussed backwards so that at no point any activity takes so much time that they cannot go airborne when they are allowed to go airborne so it's not happening on its own and yet if you see nobody else seems to follow that now peter drucker famously said strategy eats culture for breakfast nothing could be truer than this you can make any strategy for your company you can have any grand plans you can be a country which achieves total surprise and mounts the heights of kargil but you know what if your culture is not aligned to do what you are supposed to do is not going to work i've seen a company where they tried to make the entire company digital but at the same time there was zero effort to change the mindset even the knowledge base of the bulk of the employees who continue to do manual work therefore strategy culture eats strategy for breakfast similarly do you remember satyam one of india's greatest it stories came into being in 1987 with 20 employees in mere 4 years it went public it had 50000 employees it was present in 67 countries it was one of the biggest success stories we had in 2007 ernest and young gave it an award for great governance and yet in december 2018 the company crashed in a moment of days now the the owner of the company mr raju confessed that there was a fraud of 7800 crores but my story is really not about satyam what about the auditors who for nine long years audited satyam but had a culture of never red flagging anything price for house cooper pwc must be a great company again but at that point of time for nine long years the culture must have been as i'm afraid i've seen auditors coming to my company where the culture is that we want next year's contract so we not going to red flag too many things even when pwc's existence depended on it not one employee ever told them that 10000 of satyam's employee are fake don't exist on in life and there are 10000 bank accounts from which 20 crore rupees are being drawn for use for all kinds of purposes that is how malevolent the effect of culture can be if you stop looking all right and yet there are some great stories now we are coming more towards the end of the whole story a question that can be asked is what what do we do about the culture around me everything is the same people are corrupt people are lazy the whole world is going on its own way what do i do about the culture not true culture can help you create a small island i have already spoken about the army and i'm going to come back to the army again but then there are tatas then there is infosys with an entirely different approach to leadership you can create a culture and i'm sure there are many many shining examples on the firmament of our corporate sector which will tell you that you can create a good culture provided you think about it before we talk about how do you create it let me substantiate my point that you can be an island now we know that whether you are a fan of secularism or not the truth of the matter is that there are large swaths of this country which do not really believe from their heart in this entire concept what does the army do i do not know how many people are aware other than my veteran friends that the armed forces or the army no longer has a temple or a gurdwara or a masjid or a church starting with 1984 we decided to have a sarv dharm sthal you have all religions praying in one room you have a temple in a corner a church in the other corner a masjid here a gurdwara sahib here and in some cases a buddhist praying place how beautiful is that the officers of the infantry and the armored corps and other fighting arms 
follow the rituals of the religion of the troops they command so if you are a malayali serving in sikh regiment come gurpurab you going to wear a pagdi and you going to go to the gurdwara sahib and you going to do exactly as everybody else does because for us that is the real god i was in bihar regiment we had 50% adivasi troops and 50% north bihari troops so come sunday the co would randomly divide us and say you guys mandir you guys church personally if you ask me i prefer going to church because i have always been putting on weight and i can't really sit down on the floor so sitting on a bench was far more easier for me and that's the only difference i found let me give you a stirring example there was a unit called 25 rajput under the command of brigadier khanna who was present on the call i was standing next to the ceo a gentleman by the name of karl natri and the two ic came and said sir we have janmashtami coming up the pandit ji has a compassionate reason to go home so i am letting him go so i am training a boy who can speak very well on janmashtami so karl natri looked at him and said we have a masjid no we have two companies of muslims what is the bolvi ji doing sir he is present so he is a man of god he'll do the provocation tell him to get trained i have never heard a more stirring provocation on a janmashtami than on that occasion i have known out of an incident where two sikh lai boys sikh boys let's call them senior sikh and junior sikh one was a naik one was a sikh boy so the junior sikh the sipahi asked is the naik he said ye jo xmas hai so they don't know how to say christmas ye jo xmas hai iska kya matlab hota hai so the senior sardar put his hands together as if in prayer and said ye christians ka gurpurab hai that is the explanation of what religion should really mean actually i can go on and on let me give you two more on the line of control in the rajouri sector there was a battalion which pulled out and was replaced by a battalion of grenadiers and the company was of thimkani muslims now there was a temple there in those days so the temple was closed shelling started and pakistanis were shelling and couple of our boys got hurt so the subedar subedar khan went to the company commander i am just making up these names i don't know the names subedar khan went to the company commander call him major sharma because he was a hindu and he went to him and said ye major sahab ye aap aisa karo aap ye kholo mandir aur aap thoda sham ko aake aarti kara karo because we are getting shelled and we are getting killed maybe the god is annoyed with us so major sharma said i am very ashamed to tell you that i don't know the words of aarti is it all right so at that night subedar khan sat with the radio set with a candle spoke to the neighboring battalion and took down the words of the aarti in the morning and gave went and gave it to major sharma and said here is the words of aarti sir start doing it today well uh the next thing that i'm going to tell you may be a little controversial but i will say it in 1984 there was this operation blue star while we all celebrated the death of that terrible terrorist the fact of the matter is many sikhs in the country felt slapped people like kushwan singh had been saying for ages please enter the golden temple but it was too late and finally when we had to enter there were a lot of casualties on both sides the army lost a lot of people the temple was very badly uh, you know destroyed in some cases so there were stray incidents of mutiny in the army very stray a few people took the weapons and took off once the battalion was serving was in the same area where i was posted as a young captain a few days later there was gurpurab the goc ordered that every single officer of the division will attend gurpurab with the sikhs nobody explained to us why we were doing it there was no propaganda involved and i remember as a youngster because i was a very sensitive person i saw each person going and putting his head on the floor and lingering a little bit longer 
we know you are hurt but with we are with you how is it that you can create a culture like that when all around you uh, people are increasingly talking about intolerance all right which brings us to the operative part what do you do about it you have a company you have a family you have a club how do you change the culture the first piece of news i must tell you is that it's hard it takes time to change cultures when you start changing culture is almost the last thing that changes the first starting point is that sir you are not audible your voice is not audible hello can you hear me yeah now yes okay. thank you thank you so i suddenly got muted uh, uh which which happens very often in my own house my wife mutes me very often but it wasn't going to happen here all right so the first thing is that your the top person the top leadership the top management must sit down and decide which parts of the culture we want to fix let's not just talk about it what is it we want to fix do we fix want to fix responsiveness do we want to fix accountability do we want to fix people the way they bond with each other what do we want to fix having decided that that has got to be put into every sop every procedure every norm every tradition the indian army for example says that we have zero tolerance about crimes relating to women and many senior officers even generals have been thrown out of the army for this reason that's acting on the law but what is the tradition the tradition is you will not discuss women politics and religion in the mess the same thing is reflected in everything that you do you cannot have your sop saying something else and you wanting something totally different for example you cannot talk about women empowerment all the time and you don't even have the posh act operative in your company the prevention of sexual harassment which is a legal requirement you can't talk about inclusiveness but when you look at the demography of your company you realize god there's only one kind here <laughs> when i joined the engineering company where i took over as ceo there were four women four in a headquarter of 110 and we used to talk about inclusiveness all right so change the sops change the procedures change the norms is going to take time the next thing is change your rewards and punishment system if you make money in the army in a wrong way there is only one punishment you get court martialed you get cashiered you lose your pension many other things may be tolerated but that's the punishment on which people work and similarly you reward good things what do you reward you reward initiative let me give you an example remember a time when there was a news that an army major had strapped up kashmiri in front of his jeep his name was major gogoi the entire country the liberal media everybody went up and said i have nothing wrong i am not against liberal media great more power to them but everybody started saying indian army is using civilians for as human shield there was big outcry there was even a political outcry what major gogoi had done was in trying to save a few guys of crpf from a mob that was pelting stones he decided that instead of firing into the mob into the crowd he is going to use this as a tactic now i am not going to discuss the merits of the case because i have not faced a mob i suspect none of you have so we don't know how we will behave at that point of time but he was taking initiative it was an error if it was an error it was an error of judgment it wasn't an error of commission it wasn't an error of intent so what did general bipin rawat do when he visited srinagar next time in the middle of the court of inquiry he pinned a chief's commendation on his chest remember the news that's because we have a reward system 
that promotes initiative if we were not to promote initiative you would have an army of rabbits when well, what you need is an army of tigers extending the story further when the same major gogoi a year later messed around with a woman what happened he was court martialed same guy but different problem so your reward and punishment system must reflect what you're talking about then it must be reflected in symbolism when you stand on the stage if you think you have a waiter who's done a terrific job who's very committed who's very selfless or a or a chap who operates your lift for example or even a senior vp put him on the stage symbolism has great power awards have great power and everybody doesn't want a bonus let me tell you if bonuses were what made us work then indian army wouldn't work people are hungry for recognition acknowledgement love even that works next is the leadership must repeat it again and again from every forum people don't remember it start your speech by saying the first thing i want to tell you is we are a company which will respond we are the company which replies emails in 45 minutes whatever i'm just giving an example repeat it let it seep into the dna of people set example as a leader you cannot be a famous tycoon stepping out of a jet every now and then with a bevy of beauties around you and telling your airline and beer business less cut costs austerity is the thing to do nobody will believe you you got to set an example no matter how hard it is how tough it is and then of course you got to train and finally and above all you've got to persist it is not going to change in a day is going to take months probably years but it will change these dunes will shift and let me assure you you will be the better for it you've been a great audience thank you very much i now request uh, yes, commander sir. girish konkar to give the vote of thanks sorry sorry uh, there is a question answer session forgive me uh, so we open it for q and a so whom sir want to ask the question please raise hand and then we'll go one by one uh, the uh, unmuting the people please raise the hand anyone has any question yeah i got a question surendra agarwal <clears throat> general bali it was a great talk by you you know that the indian banking system is bleeding because of npas which has been created by willful corporate defaulters now is it because of the what is the solution is it because of the political culture or the banking culture in the system okay so if you want to see it from the banking point of view i would talk about only the banking culture to start with look we are we have to be realistic we are operating in a real world where many things have to be done and adjusted okay nobody here is talking about just following you know some imaginary rule book in your head all the time having said that the trick is to decide which is that inflection point which if crossed is going to have serious consequences for your organization which is that point you will not cross that is the point where which should be the outer boundaries laid down by your culture is it possible for me to define that no it's not of, of course not i am not a banking professional but having said that i do understand there is this twin pressure of the political uh, forces wanting uh, bank, banks to lend the banks also wanting to lend because they have to earn the money back and looking the other way in some cases restructuring loans again and again when things keep getting out of hand all that happens but culturally you have to decide this is a line i am not going to cross i will not do this i will not do what the americans did in subprime lending i will not just keep closing my eyes and just keep bundling the loans and keep hoping that things will work out all right till there's a crash okay so that's as uh, specific an answer as i can give you but there are willful defaulters corporates 
<laughs> if there, I I am all for fixing the willful defaulters. <laughs> I'm all for it. You see, people like you and I, we uh, can be hauled up for not paying two hundred rupees of income tax. So I see zero reason why willful defaulters should not be taken to the cleaners. Uh, fix your rules first, but after that, once you've done the rules, whatever, be as generous as you want to be in your rules. But after that, don't let willful defaulters get away. Never. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Shridhar has some uh, question, uh, sir. Please ask. So, uh, am I audible? Yes, absolutely. You're, yeah, you're, I think it was one of the most fascinating talks I have ever heard. It was absolutely brilliant. And uh, my question is: uh, This I am told that uh, the culture of the Chinese army, armed forces, is nowhere near. our culture and uh, they in fact uh, don't have a good culture at all so i just wanted your thoughts on that i wouldn't i i definitely wouldn't say that first of all let me thank you because one of the reasons that the talk was good was because i saw you smiling right through it i could watch you from here thank you uh, <laughs> so no i wouldn't say that i wouldn't say that at all i have attended talks with chinese across the uh, border in bumla and not the normal uh, talks uh, which take place as flag meeting but something called border persons talks regarding khanas here he is attended it too he was the commander of the talk actually and there is nothing that we saw in their behavior or in their functioning uh, that would depict that they have uh, they don't have a professional culture as a matter of fact in some ways they were very egalitarian we tend to be a little feudal sometimes but when that there was a tea break uh i remember the chinese officer getting up and picking up chairs and putting it for us and doing all the work i don't think and <laughs> let me tell you the last thing i would advise anyone is to start thinking that the enemy's culture is weak don't that's not going to happen so no they have they have i'm sure they have a sturdy culture they have a culture of their own it's a distinctive culture it's not the indian culture of course it's a different culture but uh, no let's not make that mistake yeah Okay, Mr. Kitan Joshi. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, sorry, you have to unmute yourself, please. Mr. Joshi, please unmute. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, in the same organization, you were talking about the Tatars. I would say, uh, see the attack on Taj. Okay. There, the uh, the cooks and everybody stood, and they were. They, it was a. Exam uh, exemplary uh, uh, commitment which the staff of Taj showed for in the Tata's group itself and showed a very different culture. At the same time, you had a similar thing in Tata Securities, where uh, they were flinching money from the people. So in the same group with the same type of culture, these people are still behaving in a different way. So is it the environment which makes them do certain things or what is a very difficult thing would be a part of the culture too no you were first of all you are right about the attack on taj and i would also the same breath mention the manager who children and wife got killed but he just carried on doing his job so yeah that was a great example look when we talk about culture of an organization i cannot limit it to or expand it to a group or a number of companies and so on and so forth like i said every organization has a culture it's quite possible that tata securities i'm not familiar with the case is one of the companies where the culture has been weak from the day one maybe it's not been attended to there is a tata company i used to deal with when i was ceo of the engineering company and this guy simply just wouldn't respond to emails so it's not as if everybody in tata's is going to be great but by and large the reputation right. says the standards say the sense of probity says that tatas have created a culture which is distinct from others but whether it will happen in every unit every sub unit whether every battalion will have the same culture in the army that may not happen but there is a blanket culture which is by and large i would say uh, tatas can be associated with as good but you are right in companies Correct. can be uh, can be outliers right okay mr kumar singare health question Yeah, good evening, Bali sir. Very great inputs from you. Thank you so much. 
thank you uh, we we run two small companies and uh, when the company employee number of employees was small it was easy to inculcate my own culture into every employee but as the number grows my god it becomes damn difficult and we give up as a ceo so uh, you know i need to really fix up this and uh, first time i realized that culture really matters well <laughs> this realization uh, was not there earlier also we, we can talk about it even separately uh, with specific uh, things and i would be very happy to help you but let me just answer this question about small organizations big organizations you know a lot of people believe that when you are a small shop you got four employees or five employees you know each guy you know which chap is going to turn up after diwali which chap is going to be cutting corners which guy is going to make money who is going to work till late you know the, the few employees and therefore you are able to instill your own culture and not only that you are able to give recognition to each individual but when you grow it becomes impossible right like in your case yeah but if that is the point how does a million strong army maintain its culture i'll tell you the secret people in the indian army do not die for some fluttering indian army flag they don't die for chief of the army staff or general bali or brigadier so and so or they die for their unit you've got to empower small verticals and small units pick the best guys to be their managers those guys must translate your vision in down below all right so if you have a guy who's deficient at the hr level or at the sales level or marketing level or operational level who doesn't really doesn't really have a buy in into your culture and he is not empowered enough that if he is not recognized in public as a great guy his team won't listen to him and the culture won't develop so the trick is to empower small units not to worry about you know that's an answer okay thank you sir we will contact you thank you brits sir brits city has question uh good evening uh, general i have been with corporates for four decades plus now retired this is the first time i am hearing something about the culture uh as a lecture as a you know theory now my question to you is general sir people talk about culture and people talk about value system in very loose terms how do you differentiate between the two are we talking about the same thing in a different form or these are two different things okay excellent question value system is definitely part of the culture the bigger issues of value system are say honesty or probity or customer centricity or yeah. whatever values you have you espouse are definitely a very important core part of the culture but culture also has very many superficial things which you see you enter an office you see chaos you enter another office you see people responding you go to a receptionist you get a cold look you go to a receptionist you get a nice conversation somebody tells you sir i will guide you i'll take you to so and so place even that is part of the culture right so like i said in the beginning and you very correctly identified it the value system is the heart of the culture but the trouble is it's not the value system you speak about it's the value system you follow words are cheap anybody can say nice things in the drawing room but following them is you know the ball game i will die for my country is something i hear all the time dying for your country is another ball game so similarly i think what the top leadership should decide is these are my two or three or five values this is my operating reality i cannot be unrealistic i can't be an idealist i can't say nobody will do this nobody will engage a consultant to get me a license okay then you may fail your business may fail so you got to decide which are your limits what is that value system where will you stop and that value system should be absolutely something you nobody should be allowed to touch that should be your culture thank you very much okay thank you thank you so much under grish konger has a question hi uh, i think that is the last evening sir thank you very much for a lovely talk it was really uh, excellent uh, what you said actually my question was already asked by mr brit sethi so it was same question was on uh, culture and values I and mean, i am into leadership development and the same question gets asked uh, by every time uh, what is it that makes the armed forces work and 
uh, what is and I, I was a submariner. Now, if you look at the uh, in the submariners, we are, I mean, we were, we, you wear disposable clothing, so there is no rank, there's nothing. So we had a distinct, different culture. So what I realized is uh, cultures can be diametrically different. I mean, if you look at the submarining culture and a culture of a armed forces battalion or a unit, would be diametrically opposite. We had no sirs. You, you know, you see in the in the morning, you say hi sir, good morning sir, and go in the evening say bye sir, I'm going sir. You can't do that in the army, I'm sure. You will have a kadak salute as your culture. But what I realized is that while culture is how you do it, the underlying values is why you do it. If you have that settled, that why are you doing anything, then culture doesn't matter at all. You can be as hooligan as you want, but if your why is if that so basic thing like commitment, integrity, honesty, trust, ethic, moral, then courage of conviction. If you get these five things sorted out, that's your value system. Culture can be anything. Is what uh, I just thought I would just add on to this series because the question was already asked by. I I would I would agree with every word you said, uh, especially about values being why you do it, and culture is what the manifestation is. I would agree with every word. Now, since you brought up the submarine culture, I can't. Uh, let you get away without telling you uh, something similar from the army. Uh, two quick things. I attended the Air Force staff course. I was one of the two people who was nominated to do the course because we apparently had done well in the entrance exam so for one year. Now during the course, the Air Force people would get exasperated. They would say, "Why do you keep serving us? What's wrong with you? From morning till evening, you just saying you just said serve in the morning and that's enough." So I said, "Well, after one year, you're going to go back to your units." and i'll be court martialed so <laughs> let me let me keep my habits the second is you know the culture that submariners have a little bit of similar culture is in the armored corps in people who are riding in the tanks because you are in in close space with two more people and you are very close to each other you can't hear each other you would to touch either now as a ceo of an infantry battalion or a rashtriya rifle battalion i couldn't have imagined a jawan walking up to me and tapping me on the shoulder that wouldn't be happening but one day when i was riding in the gypsy i was a co driver i was listening to music the armored corps boy sitting behind me a sardar by the name of amar ji tapped me on my shoulder and said sahab ji so i was surprised i said i realize he is he thinks he is in a tank so i said yes he said ye jo aap angrezi ke gaane lagate ho na ye bilkul samajh nahi aate <laughs> so i looked at him and said to kya karu he said sahab koi koi punjabi ka bhi gaana ek aadha beech mein laga diya karo <laughs> so I stopped in Kupwara town. I bought two Dilair Mendi cassettes, and the routine started that I would play a couple of my songs of my choice, and I would take that out, would play Dilair Mendi, till one day somebody else noticed it who was with me. He said, "You fool! You are a CEO. You're not supposed to be a DJ. You're behaving <laughs> like a DJ to your boys." So, so, so much for different cultures. Yeah. Anyone else, please? Yeah, I think we are done. So, Mr. Ramgopal Rao, please take it over. Yeah, now I would like to request uh, Commander uh, Girish Konkar to uh, give the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Ramgopal Ji. Thank you, uh, General Bali. It was uh, really very enlightening talk, and I'm sure all of us, uh, because there are many um, industrialists over here having their own or organizations, uh, having their own. Uh, Difficulties in handling maybe ten people, hundred people, maybe a thousand people, and culture and values is one of the things that makes any organization tick. Uh, you can have the same systems and processes, but an organization can have totally different cultures, and the one which is a better culture or value system is the one which goes. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, your lovely session, and I, I could see uh, everybody was absolutely engrossed and wrapped with attention. Because the examples that you gave were absolutely live examples, and there was no theory in that. It was actual, uh, you know, the situations coming alive uh, for everyone to really grasp it and get engrossed in it. So, once again, thank you very, very much. It was as a first talk for our president, uh, new president's uh, session. It was really fantastic talk, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 Rangopal ji also has. A, he would like to present to you a book and a certificate which because of the uh, limitations of zoom obviously he cannot give it to you here but he will be couriering it to you at uh, a later date so thank you very much it was really wonderful
Thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Slowly going down. Navin Bai was there. Thank you, Mr. Ramagopal.